Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in today's video we're going to be talking about using the ADO command objects. So in our last video we went over record sets, which is great for if you have, uh, you need to iterate one at a time through each value on a select query. But what happens if you want to just strictly do an update, you want to pass in a SQL command and just have the database execute that command. So maybe you want to update multiple values at once, or maybe you want to, maybe you just want to execute the value. You don't want to have uh, an entire record set set have to come back to you, go searching through the record set for that one field, uh, you know, in your record set, that one record in your record set, and change a field on there. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of go retrieve all of the fields from that table, return them back to your access database, then go through and process and find that one record in there, change the value, save it, and then, you know, you're done. That's a lot of processing that has to happen. Sometimes you want to just strictly do, hey, uh, SQL database, just update this field for me. Okay, I know the I know the specific record. I have a value for it. Just change it. Or maybe you want to add a new record to a uh, to a table, but you don't want to have to go through the process again of getting an entire record set just so you have to execute the add new command. That's kind of a waste of memory to go and retrieve all of those records that are in that table just so you can add a new one. So. That's where it's very valuable to be able to pass in a SQL query directly to the database. And you do that in ADO with the ADO command object. So let's go ahead and hop out here and take a look at our database as it stands. Our ADO test uh, subroutine here, I've commented out pretty much everything except for our connection information. So I've got our adodb.connection object. Uh, filling in the connection string which connects to our Northwind database and then loop through until we get a proper connection state of one and then anything after this loop is going to be executed, right? So once we've got our connection here, uh, what are we going to want to do? So the first thing that we're going to want to do in order to create that command object is we're going to need to dim it. So we'll do dim ADO com is what I'm going to call it and as a new ADODB command. So since it's a, um, it's going to be its own object, it's not something that's going to get set by the connection. It's going to be a brand new instantiated, basically a, a command object that's got nothing on it. No property has been set. Nothing has been, um, has been created for it yet. So we're going to just do it as a new command. And now, after we've established our connection, we need to do the same similar thing to what we did with the ADO rec object in our last video. We need to set its active connection property equal to the connection object. So we've got our connection here. Our connection object is here. We know that it's got a good valid connection to our database. Now let's go ahead and set the active connection property for our ADO com active connection equal to ADO con. Now, one little problem here is you actually, whenever you're working with objects, you need to make sure if you're going to set a property that's supposed to be filled with an object, you have to use the set keyword. Okay. So set ADO com dot active connection equal to ADO com. All right. So there we go with that. Now there's a property on our command object that we need to set also, which is to tell it what kind of command is it? What kind of command object is it? It's ADO com. And the property that you're going to set this at is the command type. And you're going to set the command type equal to most likely you're going to want to use the AD command text. There are other different uh, command types that you can set this to. But 99.999% of the time, it's going to be just AD command text. You can also say that it is a stored procedure, um, or you can even do it as a file, and you can pass in a file to it if you wanted to. But honestly, I've, I've rarely ever found a reason to do anything other than AD command text. Even if you're going to be calling a stored procedure, you can just call the execute command in a text command object. So... 
I'm just going to set it to AD command text. And now, since we're going to set it to, uh, we're going to say that it's a text command that we're going to be issuing here, we actually need to tell it what is that text to execute. And the property that you set that on is ADOCOM command text. Okay, so what is the command text going to be? Well, in our example here, I said we want to execute an actual SQL query. And one thing to be very aware of here is that the command that you're going to be executing needs to be in the native language of the, uh, of the database. So since this is a Microsoft SQL server that we're running this on, we need to be issuing this SQL command in T-SQL language. If you were doing this on an Oracle database, you would need to make sure it has Oracle syntax. If you're running it in a DBase, then you need to make sure it's DBase syntax. If it's Fox Pro, then you need to make sure it's Fox Pro syntax, all that good stuff. So since we're going to be doing it in Microsoft SQL Server, we need to do it in the T SQL native language. But don't worry, that sounds a little scarier than it is. You'll probably recognize this is really identical to the same way we would do it in Access. It's update. We're going to be doing an update command. And more specifically, our demonstration is going to be, I'm going to fill in for this first company A, I'm going to set the email address for Anna Bedex for company A. I'm going to go ahead and set her email address. So that's going to be an update, uh, an update command in T-SQL. And we're going to be updating the customer's table. We're going to set the value of the email address, and email address is, I'm putting it in brackets because there's a space in the name of the column, okay? And we're going to set the email address equal to the new email address that she's given us, which we'll say is abedex at companya.com, okay? And since the um, just to show you here, if I go into the design view of the customers table, you'll see that email address is a type called nvarcar, which is basically text or string. Okay, And since it's a string value, it's text, we need to make sure we're filling in, uh, we're saying that this, is, um, that this is actually an absolute string here. Okay, This is a string value that's being passed in. That's why we have the apostrophes, right? So it's a literal string value that's being passed into the email address column. And now if I were to execute this as it stands, that would actually set all of the email address column to abedex at companya.com, which is not the case. We don't really want every single one of these email addresses to be set to abedex. We only want this one row here to be set with the abedex. So we're going to set our where clause equal to, uh, we're going to say company is equal to, and again, this is uh, this company column here is a nvar car, so it's string. I need to pass in a literal string value. So we're going to do company A, and that's going to be specifying where company A, or where company equals A, we're going to set the email address equal to abedex at companya.com on the customer's table. Okay, so that is our SQL query that we're going to execute. Now to actually execute it, we need to do one last thing on our command object, and that is to tell it to execute. So there's an execute method here, which will execute whatever is in the command text property. All right, let's go ahead and save that, and I'm going to compile it just to make sure I didn't fat finger anything. Everything looks good. All right, and I've got my breakpoint here, so when we execute this ADO test subroutine, we'll be able to step through the code. All right, so here we go. All right, first we're setting the connection object with the connection string, opening up the connection, making sure that the connection is connected, and indeed we are. So now let's go ahead and set the active connection property equal to our ADOCON object. We're setting the command type to a text command. We're now setting the command text equal to the query we want to execute. And now let's go ahead and execute it. 
And since we moved past that without any sort of errors, it looks like our command executed properly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the values that we have returned now on this table. So again, we're changing this email address from null to abedx. So let's go ahead and re-query our table. And sure enough, there we go, abedx at companya.com. So we properly changed our email address for that one record using the ADO command object. Okay, so one last thing I want to show you here, which is kind of cool about the command object, is that you can actually return this execute method back as a record set. So you can see in the IntelliSense that the execute method on an ADO command object returns back as a record set. So that's something we can use to our advantage. I'm going to go ahead and um, take this ADO rec object and I'm going to uncomment it out so we have it back in play here. So we're going to dim ADO rec as a new ADO DB record set object. And what I want to do is I want to set the ADO rec object equal to the record set that gets returned back by this execute method. Okay, uh, but since the update method or the excuse me the update um, command in SQL does not actually return back any values, it doesn't return back any rows. The update command is not one that's really going to be too useful right now. So let's change this from an update command to a select statement. And we'll do select uh, company. Let's see, what do we got here? We got company, last name, first name, and we'll do ID also. So we'll do select ID company. We'll do last name. We'll do first name. And just to make things interesting, um, oops, from, from customers, we'll do an order by, just to make things interesting. Order, order by, we'll do um, first name. So we'll order by first name. Okay, so that'll return back in our record set a select query from our customers table and order all of our customers by their first name. And it's going to return that as a record set into our ADO rec object. And so that we can just verify that it, that in fact happens. We want to test to make sure it works. We'll do this. We'll do uh, if ADO, oops, excuse me, if not ADO rec EOF, then ADO rec move first. And now we'll loop through it. So do until ADO rec EOF. Oops, EOF, there we go. And loop, I'm gonna do ADO rec, move next. And so we're, I'm just gonna print out the company name out into our immediate window using the debug.print command. And we'll do ADO rec and we'll do company. Okay, so that's gonna print out to our immediate window the name of the company. And remember, just you can see that the company field here is automatically ordered alphabetically in this query, right? You can see they they were entered into the system alphabetically, A through Z. But I've changed that, right? I've said instead order it by first name. So we should get a different set of company names. It's not going to be in this order that we see them. And okay, I think we should be good to go. Let me just go ahead and compile that and make sure it works. It looks like it does. So let's go ahead and start it. Once again, we're, uh, we're gonna set our command, or our, excuse me, our connection object. We're gonna establish our connection to our SQL database. We're gonna open that connection, check its state to make sure it's connected. Once it is, we're gonna set that connection object to our active connection property of our, uh, of our command object. Now we're going to set the command type to text, set the command text equal to that select statement that gets those four fields from our customer's table and orders them by first name. Now the execute method here should return back a re an ADO DB record set object, and we're going to set that record set into our ADO rec object. 
And now we're going to check to make sure it's not already at the end of the file, because if it was at the end of the file, that would mean we didn't get any records returned. And that, since it went past that, that's a good sign. It wants to move to the first record, because there are records. Now we're going to loop through our record set until we get to the end of the file. And we're going to debug print the company. Company S has the first alphabetically named person. So we have Alexander is the first uh, alphabetically named person there. Uh, okay, next, company BB. Let's see, company BB. Ameritanesh, I think that's how you pronounce that. Okay, so it looks like it's, it's working. It looks like everything that we did here is working just fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and play that. So there we go. That is how you can use the ADODB command object in order to either execute an update or an insert, or you could even execute a, a stored procedure using just straight command text. Okay, so that's very, very handy. You can also set that execute method back into a record set object, and then you can iterate through that record set object if you'd like. So that's very useful. That's something that I do all the time. Uh, the command text and just sending myself uh, sending the command straight up to the SQL server is absolutely wonderful because what's great about this code here is that everything is being executed on the SQL server. Your access database isn't really doing anything. It's got a little bit of VBA code going on here, but you're not using the JET or ACE engine in any capacity whatsoever. All you're doing is telling the SQL server to do things, and that reduces the footprint. That makes things go a lot faster for the user experience because we're not doing huge chunks of record sets. We're making all of the processing happening on the SQL server instead of having record sets come back to the access database and have the access database JET or ACE engine churn over those records. We don't have any of that. Everything is strictly being handled directly on the SQL server, and that's fantastic. makes things a lot better. So there you go. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Thank you so much.